about like that. Hi, I'm Janet. Um, in case you were curious how to spell my name, it's a huge ass letters here for you. But um, I have three poems that I thought I'd read for you. Uh, they all have absolutely nothing in common. Um, this one's called Excuses for Skipping Work. With her insane work schedule and how I could never miss a deadline, I never took days off. But one time I decided that I wanted to go out with the guys. There was a lull at work for a week and I decided I wanted to pick out a day and actually go out so that I could take the next day off. But I had to make sure that it didn't look like I was taking the day off for a long weekend. So it couldn't be like a Monday or a Friday. So I thought for a second, hey, what if we go out on a Tuesday night and I'll just take a sick day off on Wednesday and no one will think that I was playing hooky in the middle of the week trying to have a vacation long weekend or anything like that. So, so the Tuesday night came and we went out, drank a ton. And at one point, I was walking down the street with my arms over the shoulders of two men and we were walking in stride, laughing. But I think one of the guys stepped in my path so my right foot landed on his and I twisted my ankle and down I went. The guy saw me and he turned around and he sat down saying, Oh, okay, this is a good place to sit. <laughs> but no, you didn't understand. I was actually in pain. <laughs> it was like I'd fallen and I couldn't get up. But, but these guys, they were my neighbors. So we went home and they helped me get to my apartment door. Fifteen minutes later, I had to call my neighbors who had my key. And I asked someone to come and get some ice for my ankle. <laughs> And the neighbor came over and he swore that my ankle was swollen with a wealth the size of a baseball. Good thing I happened to have gauze and crutches. Because, yeah, I took the next day off. I couldn't really walk. And so I hobbled into work on Thursday. My supervisor came into my office. Oh, I thought you were just playing hooky yesterday, he said. Well, obviously I wasn't. I said. <laughs> and although I had a sprained ankle, it was like no one knew the wiser. And like I was one of the boys, it was cool to have so much fun on a schedule for us on a Tuesday night. Stories. Um, this one is actually something that I um, I run a literary magazine, CCND, and I um, it's actually named after a poem. And it's called Children, Churches, and Daddies. But people hear that and they think that I am a Christian mother of four, and these are my rhyming poems. But it's not like that at all. We don't like religious stuff. But every once in a while we'll get something. And um, my husband had just told me that back in Chicago, where I'm from, there is a play going on for two weekends called like. Ayn Rand in love or, <laughs> or something and I'm like oh my god if I was back there I would so want to see that but I thought of that when I read this because I I don't think this person knew who Ayn Rand was but it sounds like that so much to me but anyway this is a piece called brace yourselves how many religious people are here this is called without religion God doesn't make sense there are other, more rational possibilities. Prove to me, to make me believe, be provable. Morals, virtues, values are not based on religion. People see no consequence in being good unless uh, the consequence is God. People are afraid to face death. People really don't want to believe death is an end. It is an end. You simply cease to exist. People claim to have beliefs, but don't live by them. <laughs> They're not beliefs. They lack a belief system. They understand. God is your answer to all of your questions. Not the right answer, but an answer. But God loves you. If love is unconditional, then there's no value in it. It is not earned. It is not chosen. It is not there for a value. It possesses no worth. God has been created by people throughout the ages to answer the unanswerable. Rain gods explained the weather. People created gods for harvests. God reflected the stars and planets. God explained how the world began, how to live well, and what will happen after our lives end. God reflected the image of man and earth. But they were all created. Take responsibility and credit for what you do. 
Joy comes from within. You, you can't find joy from within, so you find it in your God. For great minds to prosper, they have to follow reason. I do what I set my mind to. I use the best tools I have. My mind. I succeed. I accomplish my goals. Knowing that, believing in my abilities, gives me the drive, makes me truly happy. It is my mind, my mind, my abilities, my power, not some god that makes my life complete. I have complete dominion over my life. I'm the one I answer to. I fill my own void. Without religion, I am whole. I didn't know how that one would go over, so I thought I'd... <laughs> I thought I'd try and see what happened. Um, but this one I will end on, and this is why when she said it's PG-13, I'm like, am I allowed to use a swear word? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I've never read this. This is really, really, really old. And really old shit. Really <laughs> old shit. <laughs> and I've never read it before, and it is the only poem I have that I use the F word. Uh, this is called Perversion. Have you ever just wanted to fuck somebody? You were so attracted to them that you wanted to tear all their clothes off. And I do mean tear. I'm talking, I want to see the rip in the fabric right down to the fiber. You just thought you wanted them naked through you, ripping through you, pulling you to shreds, and that you might actually be liking every minute of it? But then you think about it. Wait a minute, this person sitting across the table from you in this small cafe, and they've got this harsh light right above them making strange shadows on their face. You talk to this person, you act like someone who's proper, who read all the fucking etiquette books, and you talk, and you smile, and you nod, and all the time you're thinking these really perverse thoughts. But there's something in the back of your head, no matter how horny you get, a small part of you that says, Oh, fuck it. I just want to know if anyone else has had that feeling. Someone else. Anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for Joe to come on up here and say, every guy has that thought, silly. <laughs> Just about. I mean, it's, except for me, my mind is pure when I'm unconscious. Give it up one more time for Janet, ladies and gentlemen, please.